Hi there, friends. Welcome back to Little Lab at Home at the Museum of Life and Science. Uh, my name is Peregrine, and I am so excited to be doing this program with you today. Um, I hope that um, all of you will help lead our program with your thoughts and your questions and ideas um, in our moderated chat box, because that's the way that I can uh, talk to you and hear from you. Um, so today's experiment has to do with um, with some chemistry, which is going to be really cool, it has to do with with these guys with highlighters. I want to start off by asking, do you guys know what a highlighter is or what we usually use them for? This is a great addition. My friend is saying um, it highlights important things. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. So um, if you're reading some text, uh, there's a bunch of words on this page. If you find a really important idea. You can use a highlighter. You can draw on the words that are really important. And then they're this bright color, um, which helps you find it again when you want to uh, come back to that idea and think about it some more. So we have some yellow highlighters today. They come in other colors, like I have um, a green one here. I think they also come in blue and pink, but the yellow one has something inside it that we are gonna need for today's experiment. We're gonna be using highlighter, a yellow highlighter, as a pH indicator. Before we get started, I wanted to talk about what a pH indicator is, what that even means. So everything all around us, right, is made out of these teeny, 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 tiny pieces called atoms, which make up molecules. We're going to mostly be talking about molecules. That's when you stick a couple different atoms together in different uh, combinations. So these molecules make up everything around us and um, molecules make up different types of chemicals, right? We think of a chemical as being something um, bubbly and green that comes in a beaker, but really everything is made up of chemicals, these different groups of molecules. And um, those different molecules have different traits or characteristics, but we're going to be talking about a certain trait that a chemical can have, and that's its acidity. So I'm going to put this in the chat. Acidity is the amount of acid that something has. Acidity and acids. Do we know what it means to be acidic? Do we know what an acid is? What do you think? Let me know about your ideas. What is an acid exactly? Or do you know an example of any type of acid? Have you encountered any acids? I know a lot of times when I think of the word acid, I, I think of something that's kind of um, almost dangerous, right? I, I, my idea of an acid is again, kind of my same as my idea of, of what a chemical is, this bubbling green liquid. Not all acids are dangerous bubbling green liquids. In fact, I'd probably say that most of them are not. There are acids all around us. They're a big part of the molecules that we encounter in our everyday life. One of my friends in the chat um, mentioned that they said, uh, they said lemon juice is uh, an example of an acid. That's true. Lemon juice is an example of an acid. Does anybody know any other types of acids? Ooh, we have a friend who said vinegar. Vinegar or acetic acid. It's a great example. Very strong acid, acetic acid or vinegar. There's all kinds of different um, acids that you can find around their house. And um, when we're thinking about what an acid is, it's a type of molecule, or it's a trait of a molecule, that means it loves to give. So when different molecules interact with each other, sometimes they pass back and forth little pieces of themselves, little ions, sort of, I always think of them playing catch with little pieces of themselves. Acids are chemicals that love to give their ions when they interact with other molecules. And that means that they have different reactions with different kinds of molecules. We'll also be talking about um, the opposite of an acid, which is called a base. So a base is the opposite of an acid. That means that it's a type of molecule that loves to receive, meaning when it comes into contact with certain types of other molecules, it will receive those ions that uh, chemicals, often acids, are giving. So basically, we're saying if something is acidic or basic, it has to do with um, how it interacts with other chemicals. 
I think there's a really kind of famous interaction between two types of chemicals that, uh, that tells us a little bit about how bases and acids sometimes react to one another. If I take two chemicals, one of them being vinegar and acetic, uh, also called acetic acid, and one of them being a sodium bicarbonate, which means it's uh, baking soda in water. And you can see it doesn't dissolve very well in water, but we'll stir it up and it will work just the same. We know that since one is an acid and baking soda is a base, that they're gonna trade some ions back and forth. But what does that mean? In our case, um, with these specific chemicals, it means that they are going to have a reaction to one another. So I went ahead and stirred up my sodium bicarbonate a little bit, and I put a little bit in here. Oh, I have a friend in the chat who has a hypothesis. It will explode. There is definitely going to be a pretty dramatic reaction. I'm going to go ahead and add our acetic acid or our vinegar. Ready? Here we go. Maybe not quite an explosion. Maybe if I added a bunch more of it, it would be a more dramatic explosion. But something definitely happened. It's almost like I made seltzer water. When these two combined, they released a gas. And that was a consequence of them uh, trading ions back and forth. They caused a chemical reaction, which released gas. That's these little bubbles. And it's very true. My friend was talking about explosions. If I, uh, if I kept this covered, all of the gas might build up, and that might cause a small explosion. But I think for now, I'll put this aside, because I would love to talk about what this all has to do with highlighters. So some things are acids. Some things are bases. Sometimes we can tell if they're acidic or basic. Um, based on other traits, like acids, if they're safe for us to eat, they're often sour. That's a characteristic of an acid. Um, bases, on the other hand, often taste kind of bitter. A lot of times, um, bases also feel slick and almost like soapy. That's another characteristic that um, bases tend to have. There's other ways for us to tell, though. We uh, use a scale, kind of like uh, we use a scale for judging temperature. We use a number. Um, for judging acidity, we use a scale called the pH scale. And so the pH scale is sort of like um, sort of like a thermometer for acidity. We give it a number. If it's a low number, right, like a, a one or a two, then we say it's something very acidic. If we give it a higher number, like 13 or 14, that's as high as it goes, that's something very basic. So low pH means acid. High pH means base. We can also judge it by how it interacts with other chemicals. And here is where our highlighter comes in. Sometimes in a lab, like in my lab, I can use um, uh, chemicals called pH indicators that change color when they're in the presence of an acid or base. I've got something here that will change in the presence of an acid or base but it's not quite gonna be a color change exactly. Highlighters have, a yellow highlighters have a special chemical in them called pyranine. And I'll go ahead and put that in the chat. Pyranine is a chemical inside of this yellow highlighter that's going to react with our acid or base. Let's go ahead and check out how it will react. Um, I'm gonna go ahead to my experiment cam and we're going to talk about the um, items you'll need for today's experiment, and then we'll be able to experiment together. So for today's experiment, we asked you to grab, of course, a yellow highlighter. Um, we also asked you to grab a paper towel. Now, I have a couple of paper towels here because, um, first of all, we might spill, and we can always use a paper towel for that. But also, our paper towel is going to be um, the main space where we are experimenting. So it's going to be really helpful for our experiment. Um, we also asked you to grab a few other household chemicals, including um, some water. You can tell it's water because it has the blue um, side, or it has, the, it has the blue numbers on there. That's how I'm um, differentiating it. I also have some vinegar, some acetic acid, and I have my sodium bicarbonate. You saw these earlier. This is my baking soda and water. I also have a little stick to help stir my sodium bicarbonate because it gets settled. 
Um, I've also got a spoon. We said you could use a spoon or a dropper if you happen to have one. This is like a little pipette, or if you have a little eyedropper, that would really help. Um, a spoon will do just the same thing. Even if it's not a tiny spoon like me, it's something that can help you scoop up the liquid and drop it very carefully onto your surface where you're experimenting. So the other thing you will need is a couple of different household acids and bases. Now we might not know exactly if we've got an acid or a base, but we know that we've got some chemicals that are safe for us to combine and test. Here I have some milk. I have some pineapple juice that's left over from last week's experiment on DNA. Um, I've got some cranberry juice and I've got some green tea. So I don't know the exact pH. I don't know the exact acidity or basic of any of these chemicals, but I can find out with my highlighter. Let's go ahead and I'm going to have you take your highlighter and I want you to make a few scribbles on your paper towel. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to make a few different blobs like that. Let's do a fourth one just for fun. So we have put four different marks of highlighter on here. What we are going to do is we're going to see what happens when it's exposed to water. I'm going to use my dropper, but you could use a spoon as well. I'll go ahead and take my dropper. And on this first one, I'm just going to drop a little bit of water. You guys let me know what you see. Ready? Here we go. What do you think? Yeah, it's, it's kind of spreading. It's kind of spreading out, right? We put, a, uh, we put some liquid on here, so the ink is kind of running and it's spreading out a little bit. Do you notice any other changes? Right, maybe it's less saturated, it's not as dark because it's spreading out, um, but it stayed the same color, all that good stuff, we can still kind of see it as normal. Water is something that's not really acidic or basic. It's neutral. It's not really one or the other, so it's not gonna affect our, our pyrenine. Let's try our acid, our acetic acid. And I'll even use a, a spoon this time, just so we can show you what that looks like if you're using a spoon. So I have a little bit here. I'm not gonna dump it all on, but I am gonna tap a little bit on it at a time, just a drop at a time. So friends, tell me what you're noticing about our highlighter mark. Does it look different than when we put water on it? It's lo it looks like it has almost disappeared entirely, right? So, so wait a minute, let's try and replicate that again. We're gonna try testing this again. Let's watch it again, right? Here's my highlighter mark. I'm gonna put a dropper on it again. Look at that, my friends. When I drop my strong acid on it, my acetic acid, it begins to almost disappear. Yeah, one of my friends in the chat is saying it's, uh, it's becoming invisible. So it seems to make our highlighter mark disappear. And it's true that we can't really see our mark anymore, but it's not that it dissolved our, our pyrenine or our uh, highlighter mark. It didn't go in there and eat it all up. It's still there. In fact, I can show you that it's still there using a UV flashlight. When I use my UV light, you can see that it's still there. Even though we can't see it on the normal spectrum of light, our visible spectrum of light here, when we use our ultraviolet spectrum of light, a different wavelength of light, we can see it's still there. It just doesn't reflect visible light like it did before. So the way that we're thinking about this is if everything uh, that has a color bounces back light or color into our eyes, this, uh, this highlighter has a certain color that bounces back into our eyes, but when we add an acid, it sort of changes the molecule, it bends it such that it doesn't bounce back into our eyes anymore. We have to use a different kind of light to bounce off of it. Okay, we can even prove that it's not disappeared um, by exposing it to a base. So I'm gonna go ahead, or technically this is an alkali, 
since it's in liquid. I'm going to take a fresh pipette here. And I'm going to drop a little bit of my sodium bicarb onto my disappeared spot. Ready? What are you guys noticing? What I'm seeing is my marks have come back. What that showed me is they didn't disappear before, they just became uh, invisible in visible light. They just bent in such a way that visible light couldn't bounce back. And it looks the same under our UV light here. Let's try it just one more time. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of my acid again and I'm gonna pour it onto the same spot as before. We made it go away and now it came back and now let's try it again. Well, first we're getting a little bit of reaction. That's pretty cool. We're getting a little bit of reaction from our bicarb and our uh, vinegar, but it seems to make it disappear yet again. So what this tells us is that highlighter can be used to show us whether something is acidic or basic. If something is a strong enough acid, it makes this highlighter appear to disappear. Let's go ahead and for our last part of our experiment, let's test it on some different household liquids. We'll go ahead and do the same thing as before, make a couple little marks with my highlighter. And I'm going to use my different liquids. Do any of you have any hypotheses about my liquids? like milk or pineapple juice or cranberry juice or tea. Do you have any guesses about which one might be an acid and which one might be a base? If you do, let me know in the chat. Oh, I actually have a friend already saying that um, they think that maybe the pineapple juice will be an acid. That is an interesting hypothesis. Let's go ahead and test it out. So I'm gonna grab a clean pipette. Um, and if you are using a dropper or a spoon, it's a good idea to make sure it's nice and clean between uh, experiments so that we don't get any cross contamination, meaning we don't mix our, mix our chemicals up with each other. What we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna take my pipette and I'll test the milk first. I'll go ahead and test the milk. If it's an acid, it will make it kind of disappear. If it's a base, it won't necessarily make it go anywhere. What do you think, friends? Did it disappear? No, no, it did not disappear. It spread out kind of like, um, it looks like it spreads out when I put water on it. So this tells me that milk is not really very acidic, probably not a very strong acid. Okay, well, we had another friend who hypothesized, who guessed that pineapple juice is acidic. Let's see if pineapple juice will react with our pyrenine here. Ready? Here we go. What do we think, friends? Even though it's a little bit the color of my pineapple juice, the highlighter color has kind of disappeared. I think that that means my friend who hypothesized about pineapple juice being acidic was correct. It has made our highlighter appear to disappear. That's really interesting. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to test my uh, cranberry juice here. I'll test my cranberry juice on this one. Ready? Again, like the pineapple juice, it turns it a little bit pink, but we could still see the highlighter behind it. Um, if the highlighter was still visible in visible light. I don't know about you, my friends, but I am not seeing that highlighter in normal light. If I put a little bit of my ultraviolet light on it, I can see it's there, but in regular light, I don't see it. So that tells me that cranberry juice is definitely an acid. All right, I'm going to try one more, my tea. This is just some green tea I brewed fresh. So it's just green tea, doesn't have anything else. I'm going to go ahead and drop it on my last one. We're going to see what happens. What do you think? 
I thought maybe for a minute that it would disappear a tiny bit, but it kind of just looks like it's spreading out, kind of like the milk. So that tells me that it's not a very strong acid, but there is a way for me to test whether it's a base, right? Here's a spot where I know we had a really strong acid, both of these, because it made our highlighter disappear. I'm gonna see if I can make it reappear like we did with our sodium bicarbonate, ready? With my T, I'm gonna drop it on, see if it helps at all. What do we think? A little hard to see. I don't know if my camera's picking it up. I can see a few little dots in there, but I'm not sure. I don't think that it's quite a strong enough base. It's not quite a strong enough base to counteract the other acids I have. Let's try one more. We'll try some milk. Now this is interesting. Friends, are you able to see this? I'm gonna put um, a little bit of white background on there. When I drop some milk on, yeah, yeah, like my friend in the chat is saying, I can see a little bit of that coming back. I can see a little bit of the highlighter, that pyranine showing back up again. Same with over here. Now it's not as strong as if I put um, another strong base on it, like baking soda or sodium bicarbonate. But look at that, it's coming back just a little bit. And it's coming back more on my pineapple juice than it is on my cranberry juice. What that tells me is that cranberry juice is a stronger acid than our pineapple juice is. We have one of our friends is mentioning um, one of their results. They said their orange juice is acidic. I was hoping I, I didn't have any orange juice in my fridge. So I was hoping that someone would do orange juice. That's so interesting. So orange juice is acidic. I would encourage you to check out, especially the contents of your fridge, because that tends to be um, full of things that are safe for human consumption and don't tend to react strongly with other things and see if they react with your highlighter. See if like an acid, they make it disappear and see if you can make it reappear again using a base. Thank you so much, my friends. I've really, really enjoyed um, working with all of you. This is going to be our last Little Lab for a little while. Uh, little Lab will return in the coming months, um, but as, our, as school gets started up again, we're gonna be doing labs at home and Little Labs a little less frequently. We're still gonna have a lot of fun, cool virtual programs, um, but they're just not gonna be every week. So I will look forward to seeing you all in the future in the meantime. Thank you for being here, my friends.